Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. This tutorial is part of a beginner CSS series. I'll be using the Chrome web browser, the Visual Studio Code editor, and the live server extension for Visual Studio Code to view the web page. There are links to these tools, starter code files, and all resources in the description below. Let's move on to styling links with CSS. You can see I've got Visual Studio Code open. I have some basic styles in from the last tutorial where we have some padding, a font size, and a font family, a small font stack set on the body element. We're also importing in a font from Google Fonts. You can do that if you want to, and the starter code is available, or you can set your own font family stack if you want to as well. Also, over in the file tree, you'll see I have an index.html, and in this index, I have not only a header with an H1 heading, I have a main element that has about five paragraphs, and at least four of those paragraphs have links in them. And then I have a couple of other HTML files, very, very basic. They just contain an H1 element in the body, and that's because I needed something to link to, so I created a couple of those files as well. So let's go back to the style, and I will resize Visual Studio Code to pull it over to this half of the page, and I'm going to hide the file tree by pressing Control B, and we'll pretty much be able to see our styles here. The only thing is a long line like this import of the font will wrap. Now, over on the right, you can see I've got Chrome open, and I'm using the live server extension, so anytime we make an update to our CSS, we'll automatically see it over here on the right. Styling our hypertext links is really an extension of the typography that we just covered in the last tutorial in this series, because it's still text. So a lot of the things we learn about typography, we can apply to our links but also these links have their own default styles that are different from the rest of the text on a page. And when we talk about links in HTML, we're talking about an anchor tag, and usually that links to something with an href attribute. So these first two links that I have link to Google searches. They're different searches. One searches for web links and one searches for hypertext links. And then I've got a couple of links that just go to the other two HTML pages we created, Guitars and JavaScript, although those pages actually do not have that content, just went ahead and created links that would hold that content. So let's note the default styles of these links. They're underlined, that's the first thing to note. Also, if the link has not been visited, it's a blue color. But notice the hypertext links link that we have here and it is purple, so we know this is a visited link, and we can tell all of this just by looking at the page. Also, when we point at a link, it changes our cursor from this arrow to a pointer. It's a little hand pointing its finger at the link, so that is called a pointer cursor. And then there's another default style that we can't even see yet, and that is when we click on a link. So I'm going to click and hold down on this link, and it turns red. So this is when the link is active, and that is another default style that is set. So I'm going to go ahead and let go, and it goes back to purple without visiting the link. And if we did visit the link and come back, it would still be purple as visited. So now that we know the default styles, let's look at how those are set. The first one being text decoration that we would set, and that is what controls the underline. So the default would be underline, and if we save, we shouldn't see any difference. But oftentimes, developers want to take away that underline and style something different. You do want to make sure that it still indicates somehow that these are links. You want them to stand out in some way, and an underline is a good way for that to happen. But if you want to take that away, you can, but you have to do something else to make the link stand out. Okay, we also mentioned the cursor. So we can set a cursor, but really cursors have semantic values, and I'll see what Visual Studio Code pulls up. There's lots of different choices here, but let's look, for example, at a not allowed cursor, and it has a semantic value. It, it tells us something just when we see it. So when I point at JavaScript, you can see we get the little icon that says this is not allowed, and we know what that means. So really, we don't want to change that from a pointer most of the time. There is not really a reason to do that. So let's keep that as pointer, but I'll leave that here so you know the cursor can be set to different values. And of course, the starting color before the link has been clicked 
is just set by color. And here we see blue is the default color. And I believe that is the actual default color and not some variant of blue. Let me save again and see if I see a difference. And no, it really looks the same to me, but it may look different to you. But once I set this to blue, notice what happens to the visited link. It's changed because it overwrote the default value and then we haven't said anything for the visited link. So we need to learn how to do that as well. So what I'm about to show you is called a pseudo class. So we'll once again select the anchor element, but now we put a colon and now I can put a definition after here that defines which pseudo class that I want to select. And right now I want to select the visited pseudo class and pseudo classes represent the current state of the element because a state of an anchor element can change. It has either been visited or it hasn't. And there are some others that we'll cover as well. So for visited, let's go ahead and put this back to the default and save. And now you can see our hypertext link is once again purple. Now our other links haven't been visited, so they're still blue. Now let's look at another pseudo class that we can define. And this pseudo class is called hover. When we hover over the link, it doesn't have a default value. Right now, if we hover over a link, it doesn't change at all, either the visited or the not visited link. Both of them still just stay the same. So let's go ahead and change this. And for now, let's just choose a different blue. And I'm going to show you a trick or two where you can choose something kind of in the same range of the color you have selected for your link. But first, let's just choose a blue randomly here. So now when we hover, notice JavaScript is changing colors when I hover over it. And even the visited hypertext links will change color as well because now when we hover over the link, we have changed that state. It's now in the hover state and it is changing the color of the link. And then remember, we still have the active state as well. But right now, that's not working either because that was a default style and we have overwritten that. What has followed has been visited and hover and really we don't have the default style applied anymore. So let's go ahead and put in that active link and we can change it to something like what it was. I think it was red, so that will definitely stand out. Select that and now when I click hypertext link, it definitely turns red. And I think I visited the link and now we're searching for hypertext links. So I'll go back to our page and we can see that this link was visited. But if I click and hold down, we can see that it's active and now I'll just pull away and not visit the link. Now we have to consider specificity and we also have to consider the order these are in for the cascade. So if we put visited above our anchor selector, visited will still be applied here even though the anchor selector comes afterwards in the cascade. And that's because this visited pseudo class has more specificity than just an element, just the anchor element. And we can see that if we go to the specificity calculator, and I have this link to in the resources. And now if I just put in an anchor element, you can see the score is just 001. But if I put in an anchor element with a visited or any other pseudo selector, now the pseudo selector here is a class. I said pseudo selector, a pseudo class. I'm selecting the pseudo class. Classes, attributes, and pseudo classes. So this has more specificity and that's why the visited link continues to stay purple even though the anchor element comes afterwards in the cascade. But that's not usually the order we want things. We usually kind of want to think about it in the order that we would have them. So I'm going to put that visited back but now visited, hover, and active all have the same specificity and one can overwrite the other. So we really have to think about the order we put those in. Let me save this and right now they're all working because this is the proper order. Have your anchor tag and then have your visited pseudo class, your hover pseudo class, and finally your active and they should all work. So when we hover, it works. Visited, of course, is working. And if I click active, it is working. However, if I rearrange these, they may not. So let me go ahead and take hover and put it above visited. And so now visited comes after in the cascade. And when I hover, that still works. It hasn't been visited, but let's check our visited link. The hover doesn't work anymore. So it's important to have these in the correct order. I'll take hover 
and put it back where it belongs in this order. So you want your anchor tag, then your pseudo class of visited, then your pseudo class of hover, and finally your pseudo class of active. And there's one more very important pseudo class, and you usually see it added to the same style as the hover. And we can do that here just by putting a comma and then putting in the focus pseudo class. And this really makes your page more accessible because if a visitor or a user of your page is using a screen reader and instead of using a mouse, they are tabbing through your page, notice that right now we've selected the first link here and it has the outline around it. I am tabbing through the links. And by doing that, when it has focus, it is changing the color of the link just like we did with the hover. And that's important to make your page accessible as well. Okay, I'm going to take the focus off of that link and I'm going to remove all of these in the anchor tag, all of these styles, because they're the default styles anyway. And what I do want to put in here is a different color. We often see a color of black. We already have black text, but notice now the links are underlined with the black text. And I commonly see this on web pages as well. So we don't always take away the underline. Sometimes we use the same color as the rest of the text, but we add the underline to make them stand out. Notice you can still have a hover. You can still have a visited color if you want to, but oftentimes you don't see a visited color either. So we can just comment that out and leave it in the code. And now we don't have a different color for a visited link, and that's okay if you want to do that, but we still have a hover color, and we still have a focus color as well. So now let me back this up. Just I wanted to show a different version of that. I'll go ahead and put the visited color back in, and up here, let's go ahead and put in blue. Let's do a different color though. Let's do steel blue. I like that color. We'll save, and now we have steel blue links, and when we mouse over, it looks okay. But let me show you a couple of things you can do to stay within the same color and yet make it noticeable that you are hovering. Going back to when we covered colors in the different tutorial, we learned how to use the VS Code color selector. So I moused over the color here and it pulled up the color selector and I can click on the color bar and go to hex from the RGB and I can also go to HSL, and I'm going to choose HSL here. And now let's leave it at that, and notice it's 207, 44, and 49. Now let me just copy this, and I'm going to take it to our hover instead of the Dodger Blue. And now right here, this number is the number we want to change. It changes the color, and so that pulled it up, and now we can just make this a little lighter choosing something different on the color wheel. If you remember the way these numbers work, it's just something different in the wheel. I'll take it down to 189. Notice the other numbers are still the same, 44% and 49. So we've just changed the shade just a little bit on the color wheel, and when we mouse over, it kind of goes with the color theme, and that is a good way to change that. So in HSL, you're really only changing the first number, and you're selecting a number close to what you had. And that is one way to get a similar color that complements what you originally had. Another approach, and I will go ahead and comment out the color, but another approach is to use an opacity property, which is making something transparent. And remember, with colors, we could add that right inside of this HSL as well, but I'll show you how to do it here with the opacity property. And let's put this to one would be the max and zero would be completely uh, invisible, transparent. So let's put this around 0.9 to just give it a little bit of transparency when we mouse over. And you can see the color changes. It's keeping the same color but it just gets a little bit lighter. And maybe the 0.8 would even be more noticeable. Let's try that. And that also works. But when you learn about this, note that opacity will change everything. So if you use this on something else, let's go up here and let's put in the main element. Now, if I put this in, it made everything on the page a little bit lighter. 
I'll make it much more noticeable here. Now that made all of the paragraphs much more transparent. So you want to be careful when you use that. Now remember also in the HSL and also in RGBA, there is a channel that allows you to add a transparency value. So here we could also do 0 0.8. And now when I mouse over, we'll still get a transparency as well. And it's also changing color there. So if we wanted to, we could put this back to the exact same color, but now we've added the transparency. So if we save and mouse over, we still get a little lighter color and it's really the same exact shade. We're just lightening it up with a little bit of transparency there. Okay, before we finish, I just wanna emphasize that these pseudo classes are not just for changing colors. You can adjust other things, although changing the color of links and the visited, hover, focus, active, all of those pseudo classes, that's a common application of this but we could do other things as well. One thing I have seen is changing a background. So let's change the background here to gold and it will be kind of like a highlighter. So when we focus and I'm tabbing through, we're kind of highlighting the links. Of course, you'd wanna choose a complementary color there as well, but that is something else I have seen before is kind of adding a highlight to each link as it has focus or as it's hovered over. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.